اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللہین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سیدنا و نبینا بالقاسم محمد والاہل بیتی تجبین الطاہرین المعصومین واللان تدامت الباقی العادائهم من الان الى قیام یوم الدین اما بعد فقال قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم افحسبتم انك انما خلقناكم عبثا وانكم الينا لا ترجعون صلوات من اكبر ستيز دي نايت بروجرام از ويل از ذا ايسال سوا فور ذا مرحومين وهم سوره فاتحه واز ريسايتد ايرلير And a request was also there um, for one of the Marhum's family. So I'd like to talk about the reality of this life and the hereafter, especially as a reminder for ourselves, because when we talk about you know, remembering the Marhumin, those who have passed away, we had to realize that everybody has to go through that uh, passage. And while we think of them and about him, them, and we try to do whatever we can, it's important to keep in focus that, you know, we have to work for ourselves also in that way. Therefore, I recited with this ayat from Surah Mu'minun, ayat number 115, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically <clears throat> begins by a question where he says, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّكَ مَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنَا أَبَثَا وَأَنْتُمْ إِلَيْنَ لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Do you think that we have created you without a purpose and that you are not going to return back to us <coughs> when it comes to the issue of, you know, uh, questioning and judgment in the, in the, in the hereafter? And so this is, this is a very um, common theme in the Qur'an. Actually, they are, if you look at the ayat of Qur'an when it comes to the aqidah, you will see there is a lot of you know, emphasis on uh, qiyamah. And the reason are two, actually, because the phenomenon of qiyamah is a mystery. We can't see it. It is ghaib. <coughs> And number two, the people in Mecca, the immediate audience of the Prophet of Islam, were very strongly against this idea. They still didn't have a problem with Allah. They believed in Allah, but the problem was they used to also associate idols as, you know, managers of the affairs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they used to worship the idols also. But when it came to uh, the issue of Qiyamah, the whole idea of resurrection, that we will die, decay, nothing will be left there, and yet you want us to believe that we will be raised back to life. And therefore you will see there are most of the um, ayat which were revealed in Mecca deal with this issue of Qiyamah. <clears throat> and so that's, that's one of the ayat basically emphasizing the same concept. We had to realize from the Islamic point of view, you know, it's a given that when we look at this dunya, this world, this is Darul Amal. This is where we have to do our actions. This is where we have to work. And the Akhirah is known as Darul Jaza. It is the abode of the uh, consequences of whatever we do here. So that's a very clear, you know, um, link between this world and the hereafter. Whatever we do here, there will be implications on the day of Qiyamat and in the hereafter. And the, the salvation basically depends on two things, two fundamental issues. One is Iman and the other is Amal Salih. To have true belief, to, to have sound belief, and also to work in order to live by those beliefs. And this is where, you know, it's important to look at the Qur'an, that Qur'an, wherever it talks about Iman, it also mentions Amal Salih. You cannot separate Amal Salih from Iman or Iman from Amal Salih. 
you know, in a, in a way there is no um, blank check that if you are a mu'min, that's fine. Whether you do amal or not, you know, whether you fulfill your duties or not, you refrain from uh, prohibitions or not, as long as you're mu'min, I believe, that's fine. No. These two things go together. You know, I just give you one or two ayahs from Quran on this issue that when it comes to the amal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarantees to the believers that whatever you do here, whatever good deed that you do in this dunya, I guarantee you that it will not be wasted. You will be compensated fairly, actually even more than that. In one ayat, for example, he says, Surah Nisa, ayat 124, Whoever does good deeds, um, from male or female, Allah says there is no difference of genders on this issue, uh, of the value of amal salih and the uh, potential of acceptance in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, provided they have iman. So Iman is always, you know, the, the basis for acceptance of good deeds. They will be, um, you know, they will enter the paradise and they will not be um, treated with zulm and unfairness at all. Another similar ayat, again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah, you know, actually three or four places. He says, وَمَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُمْفَى Emphasizing that when it comes to good deeds, there is no difference in the value of a good deed of a male or a female. Although in Quran you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mostly talks in masculine form. That is the style used those days. These days we have become more, you know, kind of conscious of this and we have to be careful in how we write. You know, no more saying mankind, say humankind. Uh, so everybody is covered. So, but those days, all languages, whether it's English or Farsi or Arabic or, you know, um, was mostly, it will be on, uh, from the grammatical point of view, it will be more in a masculine form. Although the content was for both. Like when the Quran says, Aqimu Salat, most of the time it's there. Only sometimes in, in one or two places you say, you know, aqim uh, salat referring to the wives of the Prophet. But mostly it's in masculine form. And no Muslim woman can say, oh, Quran is not talking to me. So namaz is wajib, not wajib on me. No, it is. Everybody knows that. Uh, and so, but he, in some places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes out of his way to make sure that the value of good deed and the potential of it, it being accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for all human beings, male as well as female. Salawat. Now when we talk about amal salih good deeds, many times, you know, when you talk about it within a religious context, um, people say, well, yeah, I have to do my prayers. You know, it's ibadat, or my fasting, or going for hajj. You have to realize that ibadat, you know, one has a specific meaning when we talk about rituals that we do as ibadat. And it has a broader meaning. Basically, to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship Him in a very broader sense. You know, when He says, you know, um, in one of the ayat of Quran, He says, I have not created you. Um, the jinn and the inns, except so that you may worship me. Worship there is not ibadat. Basically to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you look at the, um, the sharia, you will see that only one-tenth of the sharia deals with ibadat. Nine-tenths of the sharia deals with other issues. Whether it's financial issues, social issues, interaction with one another, you know, all issues of life. That's nine tenth of the Sharia. We think, you know, Islam is only about that, you know. No, this is this is a wrong understanding, and that's why you will see, especially when it comes to the issue of you know mutual rights that we have over one uh, or one another. 
That is a major part of the Islamic values and the teachings. The reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran always combines salat with zakat. Why? You know, actually these two words are being used in a symbolic sense. Because salat symbolizes the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. And zakat symbolizes the rights of fellow human being on one another. And by mentioning them again and again and again, Allah wants to emphasize that in Islam, salvation is not only by worshipping Him, but also fulfilling the rights of one another. Starting from your own family you know, members, going on to your relatives, your friends, your circle of you know, the, the community, and the society at large. And so this is where we have to realize that you know, when we talk about amal salih, this is something we have to do. And, and that is our capital in the in hereafter. You cannot do anything in the hereafter for yourself. Whatever you want to do, you will have to build here. And that is something we have to keep in, in, in our mind all the time. Salawat <laughs> Because once the life comes to an end, and we go through this passage of death, the ability to good, do, good, do good deeds for ourselves is gone. We can't do anything for ourselves after that. We basically, you know, um, there are some uh, ayat of Quran, especially re related to hereafter and Qiyamah, um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the scenery of what will happen. And in one or two places he says, you know, wa idil mujrimun. This is Surah Sajda at 12, that when the guilty ones will be presented in the uh, presence of the Lord on the day of Qiyamah, that they will, they will, at that time, with their heads bowed down, they will say, Rabbana absarna wa swami'na. O oh Allah, now we see the reality. In the dunya, we were denying this resurrection and the day of judgment. But now we see it. And we'll, we now hear your message. You know, so send us back. We want a second chance. Send us back to the dunya so that we may do na'mal salihan, so that we may do good deeds. You know, in, in those kind of passages in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would respond to them by saying, did I give you a life in the dunya? Did I not provide guidance to you? Did I not send messengers with warnings about this day? But you ignored me. You didn't even pay attention. You forgot me in the dunya, so today I'm going to forget you on the day of Qiyamah. And so there is no second chance of, you know, going back and trying to do amal salih It's only one chance that we have in this dunya. And so when, when a person dies, basically his, uh, you know, good deeds book um, is, is closed. Except for those good deeds which he has done, and the benefit of that is still continuing after his death. What we call, you know, amal salih which are a kind of sadaqa jariya. You know, he built a uh, school or a hospital or a water well, for example, or even, for example, you know, built a bridge to make it accessible for a village to come to the main town. As long as those items are still there, although he's dead, and that continues, let's say, for 100 years or 200 years, you know, although he has no more ability to do anything more, but as long as the benefit, benefit is generated from his good work, you know, the credit will still be added to his book. But he himself cannot do anything. And this is where I would like to bring to the issue of, you know, um, can we do anything for those who have passed away? And this is where we come to this issue of Isala Sawab, you know, conveying the reward um, of what we do for those who have passed away. Salawat <laughs> 
when those who are near and dear to us when they pass away they can't do anything but those who are alive they can still when they remember them they can still do things for them a very simple issue would be dua you know the dua that we have um even in um from Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam in Quran in Surah Ibrahim ayat number 41 Rabbana aghfir li wa liwalidayya wa lil mu'minina yawma yaqumu hisab or another ayat where we say qul rabbi irhamhuma kama rabbayani saghir that's um and when you combine that even in your qunut in namaz you're actually conveying sawab you are doing isale sawab to your parents uh through that dua so that is that is a very simple uh matter we can do without any you know extra effort on our side and this is something important to keep in mind the other is very uh simple sometimes of course on thursdays we are requested and we are we talk about it namaz hadi mayyit two rakat namaz for um number of marhumin that you have in your mind and at the end of that two rakat which is just like fajr prayers you do the uh, dua that oh allah this two rakat that i have recited you know i would like this to become a hadiya and a gift for the marhumin that i have in my mind <clears throat> don't wor- worry about the names you know sometimes people say oh, i have to write the full name otherwise there will be mistake you know malaika will send it somewhere else no whatever is in your mind allah knows better don't don't worry about it you know some people are very particular about it or you don't say so and so ibn so and so but i don't hit i don't need to say that name is enough you know i know you know and the malak knows and alim al ghaib knows about it okay salawat brother ekbar and of course then you know um reciting the quran and dedicating the thawab uh, to them um you know we have this tradition where we say please recite uh, surah fatiha and surah ikhlas three times why do we do that surah ikhlas is a surah where we are told that um when you recite surah ikhlas you get the reward of reciting one third of the of the quran so when you are told that recite it three times it is as if you will get the sawab for the entire recitation of the whole quran and that you are then dedicating to the marhumin that you have in your mind <clears throat> number four the issue of ziyarat al qubur you know visiting their grave uh whenever you can and actually especially when it comes to this kind of gifts in form of uh, tilawat of the quran or the surah um you know especially make a point i have made it a, a kind of a tradition uh, in the friday uh, prayers before we stand up for uh, ziyarat you know i ask everyone to recite surah fatiha for their parents those who are present there and the reason i do that is because friday is a very special day depending on the levels of the mu'minin and mu'minat in the barzakh you know how much access do they get about what is going on you know uh, on friday the the arwah the souls of the mu'minin actually look forward for gifts from their dear and near ones and those who don't get it they actually the day ends with a uh, kind of sadness for them that are nobody remembered me today and so that that's something you have to keep in mind that you know friday make a point of remembering you know especially your parents and those who are near and dear to you salawat on ikbar allah one one more way important one which is uh, by giving sadaqa on behalf of the marhumin and this is this is even more important than um on the uh, on the night of uh burial of the marhum it is more important than namaz e wahshat 
Because the hadith which talks about namaz of Ahshad says, give sadaqa for your mayyit tonight because the mayyit is in need of that tonight more than any other time. And if you cannot give sadaqa, then do namaz of Ahshad. We have remem- forgotten the first part on remembering f- the second one only. You hear namaz of Ahshad, namaz of Ahshad. Well, where is the issue of sadaqa? That is something important to keep in mind. And sadaqa c- can be of two types. One is you do you know, the charity once and it's done and finished. And one is known a perpetual charity, sadaqa jariya. You do something which the benefit of that or the use of that continues. And that is known as sadaqa jariya. I would you know, would like to point one point here that um, sometimes would like to say, Marana, I want to give this uh, Sahima Imam and dedicate for the sawab of my parents, for example. Baba, Sahima Imam is not yours in the first place. <laughs> if you really want, want to do something, you know, use your 80% of the saving, not that 20%. Already the owner's name is on there. You know, you, you use it as the, um, according to the rules and regulations, but if you really want to do something, you have to you do it from your own uh, money, not from the money of uh, Imam alayhi salam salatu uh, ajr Allahu ta'ala farj al-sharif. <laughs> yes, you get sawab for paying homes. It's your duty, of course. Uh, but, you know, if you want to dedicate a sawab for someone, then that has to come from your own uh, resources. And the most important thing, you know, it's not only the issue of doing the dua and prayers and giving in sadaqa, especially when it comes to the parents. If the children are good, if they do good deeds for themselves, amal salih by the awlad, by the children, even though they don't do the niyyat of dedicating the sawab to the parents, has a positive impact on the outcome of the parents. The famous story, uh, you, I'm sure you must have heard it many times, which is narrated by our prophet, that once um, Isa ibn Maryam salam, was uh, passing by a grave, where According to his ilm ghaib the person in the grave was being punished. And after some time, he passed by the same grave, and he realized he is in a much better position. And so Isa ibn Maryam prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that um, I'd passed here a year ago. The person in this grave was being punished. But now I pass this year and he is okay. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that um, he, has a, he has a child who now became mature. فَعَسْلَهَا طَرِيقًا وَعَاوَى يَتِيمًا Now he has become an adult and he repaid the road for the benefit of the public and he gave shelter to a yatim. It was the son who did the good deeds. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, because of the good deeds of the son, I forgot, I forgave the sins of the father. Even though there's no issue that he did the the, the, dedication of sabab there. So just the issue, you know, just be good. When you be good, that by itself has, you know, uh, benefits for the um, parents who have passed away. Salawat from the Akbar. Since I am on this topic, let me just mention one more point here. Uh, I, I, th- I see many times, you know, we have, uh, when we have the Arba'een and the Chahilum for the Marhumeen, you know, there is a trend that they would like to do besides the madlis and you know calling the mu'mineen and have the niyaz at the end they would also like to do something like you know print a surah yaseen 
or uh, you know one part of the Quran and did it and distributed among the mu'mineen um, for Isala Sabab of the Marhum. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but I would like you to think about it. Be more creative. If you really want to use your money and energy in doing something for the Isal Sabab of your Marhumin, look at the need of the community. Then tell me how many Shia household don't have Quran. Every Shia family has the Quran. And the Quran that they have, does it have Surah Yasin or not? So I go to one Chehlu Majlis, I get one Surah Yasin booklet. Then I go to another one, I get another one. And I still like to read the Quran, which normally I read at home. And after a while, you see you are, you know, piled up with 10, you know, different editions of Surah Yasin for different marhumin. And this is where I think, you know, let's be more creative. You really want to do something as far as publication is concerned? Look at one of the important khutbas of Amir al muminin You know, not, not a long one, otherwise nobody would read that. <laughs> you know? Shorter ones. You know, and, and print that. Or a dua from Sayyif al-Sajjadiyya. Not something which already we already have. You know, or, or let's say, okay, we'll distribute uh, musalla. How many musallas do you already have at home? So just, just be creative in the isal sawab that you, you want to do so that it is used. That item has to be used for the sawab to be you know, conveyed to the marhum. And, and that, that is something that you have to really uh, think about it, inshallah. Salawat pandik para. Of course, the, the most important thing when we talk about Iman and Amal Saleh, let me end with the impact, the very powerful impact of the law for Rasulullah and the Ahlul Bayt in our life and in, in the hereafter. There is a hadith that we have from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where he says, Hubbi wa hubba ahli bayti nafi'un fi sab'ata mawatin. He says, loving me and my ahli bayt is beneficial to you in seven places. Seven places which are very difficult ones. And then he counts that. In the wafat, at the, at the time when a person is passing away, at the time of death. Wafil qabr, when he is placed in the, in the grave and the issue of, you know, the munkir and nakir come in at that time. Wa'inda nushur when you are resurrected for the day of Qiyamah, وعند الكتاب when your record of deeds are handed over to you وعند الحساب when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts you know uh, counting your uh, deeds وعند الميزان and when your good and bad deeds are put on the scale to see what, which one is more you know heavier than the other وعند الصراط and final stage when you go through the sirat the bridge on the day of Qiyamah these are the seven places where the Prophet says that when you will be in difficulty there the love of Ahlul Bayt will be of benefit to you just one example I'll, well, uh, before I go to Urdu and Masaib here when we talk about in the Mizan the scale of good and bad deeds. There is a narration where we are told a person, you know, of course, these are all kind of predictions of what will happen. Qiyamah has not yet happened. Where a situation would be that a person will see his bad deeds, good deeds, and either they are, you know, almost 
same weight or the baddies are more heavier, then all of, all of a sudden a malak will come and put another you know, uh, load on the good deeds and it will become more heavier. And now this person himself will say, what is this? I don't remember. And he will be told, this is the weight of the salawat that you recited on Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. <laughs> That's why we are told that salawat itself is one of those elements which will make your good deeds more you know, heavier at the time of Mizan. And this is where we are to realize that the importance of the love for Ahlul Bayt attachment to them. Karbala mein agar aap dekhen chukhe isi mahine mein janabe umul banin ke bhi wafat ki munasibat hai to us sirhe mein bas janabe abbas ka zikr karke aur janabe umul banin ki taraf ek ishara karke mardis ko khatam karna chahenge ki aap janabe abbas ko dekhen کہ وہ حسین کے بھائی ہیں ماں الگ الگ ہیں نو ڈاؤٹ اب آر اٹ باپ ایک ہیں لیکن یہ جو بات ہوتی ہے نا کہ آپ اہل بیت سے محبت کریں خصوصاً آل رسول سے محبت کی جو بات ہو رہی ہے اس کی بہترین مثال جو ہے ہمارے لئے جناب عباس ہے خود حسین امیر المومنین نے بھی اپنے اولاد کی جو تربیت کی ہے اس میں اکثر کہتے تھے محمد حنفیہ کو اور دوسرے بیٹوں کو کہ تم ہمارے بیٹے ہو اسی طرح سے جس طرح سے حسن اور حسین ہمارے بیٹے ہیں فرق نہیں ہے اس میں لیکن تم دیکھتے ہوگے کہ کبھی کبھی ہم جو ہیں ترجیح دیتے ہیں پریفرنس دیتے ہیں ان دونوں کو اس لیے کہ ان میں ایک بات ہے جو تم میں نہیں ہے یہ اولاد رسول بھی ہیں انہیں ابناء رسول بھی کہا جاتا ہے اور تم نہیں ہو لہٰذا وہ بات جو ہے حسین ابن علی نے بھی اپنے اولاد میں ان کے دماغ میں بٹھا دیا تھا یہ کہ یاد رکھو تم سب میرے بیٹے ہو لیکن حسن اور حسین جو ہیں یہ رسول اللہ کے اولاد ہیں اور اس عنوان سے بہرحال حسین امام بھی تھے اور اسی لیے امام حسین علیہ السلام کے لیے آشور کے دن جو مشکل مراحل جو گزریں آئے ہیں اس میں جناب عباس کی جو مثال ہے یہ وہ عباس ہیں کہ جن کے بارے میں یہی کہا جاتا ہے کہ بچپنے سے سنتے چلے آئے ہیں کہ بابا نے میری والدہ سے شادی اس لیے کی تھی کہ ایک وقت آئے گا جہاں حسین کے ہم کام آ سکیں خود علی نے ٹریننگ دی تھی یہ مارشل آرٹس کہیے یا ملٹری آرٹس کہیے فن حرب کی تربیت عباس کو خود جناب علی نے دی تھی اتنی سب ٹریننگ کے بعد جذباتی طور پر یہ کہ ہم دنیا میں آئے ہیں حسین کی خدمت کے لیے لیکن آپ دیکھیں گے کہ ہر مرحلے میں جہاں جہاں بھی بات ہوتی ہے کبھی بھی انہوں نے اپنی رائے کو حسین کے سامنے پیش نہیں کیا ہے جو کچھ مولا نے کہا ہے اس پر جو ہے اتعاد کی ہے کوئی کوئیسٹن نہیں اٹھائے خیمیں ہٹائے گئے خیموں دریا سے دور پھر بھی کچھ نہیں بولے عباس جو حکم دیا گیا تھا اسی پر عمل کیا ہے لیکن جو بھروسہ حسین ابن علی کو اس وفاداری پر تھا وہ اس وقت اندازہ ہوتا ہے کہ جب عباس آئے ہیں حسین کے سامنے اور کہا ہے کہ بھائی میرا نفس جو ہے اب تنگ ہو رہا ہے مجھے اجازت دے کہ ہم یہ لشکر کفار سے جا کے جنگ لڑے اس وقت امام حسین علیہ السلام نے ایک بار جو ہے عباس کے سراپا کو دیکھا ہے اور وہ جملہ کہا ہے جو تاریخ میں مشہور ہے کہ اے عباس اذا مضیتا تفرق آسکری عباس اگر تم تا چلے جاؤ گے تو میرا لشکر ختم ہو جائے گا عجب نہیں کہ عباس نے پلٹ کے کہا ہو کہ مولا وہ لشکری کہاں آپ 
لیکن حسین یہ کہنا چاہتے تھے کہ عباس جب تک تم زندہ ہو میری نظروں میں میرا لشکر زندہ ہے اور اسی وقت ہے بچوں کے علاتش کی آواز بلند ہوئی ایک بہانہ مل گیا اور حسین نے کہا کہ عباس اگر کچھ چل کرنا ہے تو جا کے ان بچوں کے لیے کوئی پانی کا انتظام کرو عباس جاتے ہیں سکینہ کے پاس مشکیزہ کو لیتے ہیں یہ جو آپ اکثر دیکھتے ہیں کہ عباس کا علم اور سکینہ کے مشکیزہ ساتھ ہوتا ہے اس بچی کو اتنا بھروسہ تھا اپنے چچا پر کتنی امید کے ساتھ اس مشکیزے کو دیا ہوگا لیکن جب عباس جب جانے لگے ہیں ایک مرتبہ آواز سنتے ہیں کہ عباس جانے سے پہلے زینب نے تمہیں بلایا ہے جب بہن کے خدمت میں جاتے ہیں زینب کہتی ہیں کہ عباس ہم تمہیں روکیں گے نہیں لیکن جانے سے پہلے ایک بات سن لو کہ ہم نے بچپنے سے بابا نے کہا تھا کہ بیٹی ایک وقت آئے گا کہ جب تم اسیر اور قیدی بنو گی تیری چادر کو لوٹا جائے گا تیرے بازوں میں رسن باندھے جائیں گے لیکن پھر تم پیدا ہوئے جوان ہوئے تمہارے شجاعت کا شہرہ عالم عرب میں پھیل گیا کبھی کبھی میں سوچتی تھی کہ بابا نے جو کہا ہے آقا ہے لیکن کس طرح سے ممکن ہے کہ وہ بہن جس کا عباس جیسا بھائی ہو اس کی چادر کو لوٹا جائے یا اسے قیدی اور بصیر بنایا جائے لیکن آج مجھے یقین ہے جو بھی جاتا ہے زندہ لوٹ کے نہیں آتا ہے آج میری چادر بھی لوٹے گی اور مجھے اسیر اور قیدی بنایا جائے گا عزتاران حسین یہ بروسہ جناب حسین اور جناب زینب کو عباس کے سلسلے میں تھا اس وفاداری کو آپ دیکھیں کہ جب جناب عباس کے دونوں بازو قلم ہو جاتے ہیں مشکیزے کو اپنے دانس سے روک لیتے ہیں اور اپنے کو گھوڑے کی گردن پر گرا دیتے ہیں پیر سے زور دیتے ہیں کہ گھوڑا آگے بڑھے لیکن ہاتھ کے کٹنے کٹنے کے بعد ہر طرف سے حملہ ہوا یا تک کہ ایک مرتبہ جب جناب عباس دیکھنا چاہتے تھے اپنے رکاب پر پیر سے زور دیتے ہیں تاکہ دھڑ کو بلند کر سکے بس بلند ہونا تھا کہ ایک تیر آ کے لگتا ہے اور مشکیزے سے پانی بہ جاتا ہے ادھار آر حسین اس وقت ایک ملون آیا اور آنے کے بعد ایک گرز مارا ہے جناب عباس کے سر پر اس طرح کے عباس اپنے کو گھوڑے پر نہ سبا سکے زمین پر آتے ہیں لیکن انسان جب گھوڑے سے گرتا ہے ہمیشہ ہاتھ کا سہارا لیتا ہے لیکن ہائے عباس گھوڑے سے زمین پہ کس کیفیت میں آئے ہیں بس جناب عمل بنین کو جب کر بلا کے واقعات کی خبر ملی ہے خصوصا جناب حباس کی شہادت کے بارے میں وہ روزانہ جاتی تھی دن کے وقت جنت البقی میں بنو حاشم کے قبروں کے درمیان بیٹھ کر ایک مرسیہ پڑتی تھی جو مدینہ والے بھی سن کے روتے تھے بس اس کے ایک دو جملے سن لے فرماتی ہے کہ مجھے خبر ملی ہے کہ میرے بشت میرے شیر کو اس وقت مارا گیا ہے جب اس کے ہاتھ کٹ چکے تھے مجھے یہ خبر ملی ہے میرے بیٹے کے سر پر گرز مارا گیا ہے کہتی ہے عباس اگر تیرے ہاتھ ہوتے کوئی تُرے تمہارے سر پر کوئی گرز سے وار نہ کرتا اور آخر میں ایک جملہ کہتی ہے کہ مدینے والو مجھے ام البنین مت کہو یہ ماں زندہ ہے لیکن بیٹے سب شہید ہو چکے انا لانت اللہ حیر القوم الظالمین سیعلم اللذین ظلم ایمن قلبین انقلبون خداون دا اس خلی باز قبول فرما ہمارے گناہ کو بخشتے ہمارے توفیقات میں اضافہ فرما خداون دا عالم اسلام میں صلاح اور امن کی فضاء پیدا کر شیعہ نے علی کو اپنے حفظ و امان میں رکھ تکفیری افواج کے تمام صلاحیتوں کو 
نیست و نابود فرما امام کے ظہور میں تاجر فرما ربنا تقبل من انک انت السمیع العلیم فاتحہ